so let's move into the GABA and what are some of the tools for GABA? And as you're um, pulling up that stuff, it makes me think of the first time that I really tried GABA. It was actually working with a 12 year old girl with reactive attachment disorder. And she, uh, we were doing some work. She got really triggered, high restlessness, agitation, gave her some sublingual GABA. And I was amazed at how well she responded to that. So that was the beginning of my introduction to like, I really need to be using more of these amino acids, even in the moment, not just as routine and creating a better baseline, but even having them as tools in the moment can really be helpful. That's so interesting because um, I'd mentioned that I wanted to share a story of re reactive attachment disorder as well. And this was a young girl that I worked with and that for when I, it was also in my early days of using the amino acids and I was using them a lot at the time, but that, that one, that using it with this little girl, I use tryptophan. So I'll, I'll okay. share what I did with her with tryptophan. Um, but it's, it, it, it illustrates a good point. Some people are going to need GABA and are going to respond really well. Some are going to need tryptophan and some mm -hmm. need both. Obviously it's often right. very common that people need both, but this mm -hmm. was early days of working. And I, often I'd have the, I tend to work mostly with women They they'd say to me, well, it's working. I, I don't care how it's working. I don't care if it's a placebo. I don't care if it's working because I'm sitting here talking with you. And, you know, because it's, you can't actually believe that they can work this quickly. But when I worked with this little girl uh, with the re reactive attachment disorder, um, and she responded so well to the tryptophan, that was, that was con me convinced because she didn't know what yep. she was taking. She was, you know, she was uh, uh, eight years old. Um, she had, she actually had explosive rage and anger issues, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the symptoms, obviously, of uh, RAD and also low serotonin. So it was so bad that her mom actually had to physically hold her down. And they came to see me and they didn't have a lot of money to spend. So I had to really try and figure out Be what are the two or three things that we can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, she craved uh, uh, bread and sweet stuff. Uh, she had, she was fatigued. She wasn't sleeping well. Uh, she had these anger issues and anxiety. And uh, when, when her mom came in, we, I was discussing with the mom, you know, how bad her symptoms were. And we started talking about having to give up the candies. And she was, she was sitting in a swivel chair and she swung her back, turned around and had her back to me. She wasn't going to hear any of this. She wasn't giving up her bread or her candies. And I said, would you, you know, would you be willing to try this tryptophan? And I, with children, I use a chewable tryptophan. It's 100 milligrams. It's a nice low dose. And she, she chewed the tryptophan and within a few minutes, she turned around, uh, looked at both of us, smiled and said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give up the candy. And she was smiling and she was happier. <laughs> and with her, it was the tryptophan. And then the mm -hmm. other two big things with her was getting off gluten. And we know mm -hmm. that gluten will damage the gut and that can lead to low serotonin levels and then low iron and gluten can do that as well. So mm -hmm. we got more red meat in her diet. Uh, she got on an iron supplement and got off the gluten. And this was a different child. Uh, yeah. So they had done all the therapy work up front, but they hadn't yeah. addressed the biochemistry. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought up, you know, the GABA helped the little child that you worked with. And then, um, it, you know, it, the serotonin support helped this little girl. So it's mm -hmm. a matter of getting to the root cause. Exactly. Always. Yes. Yeah. And I, I should add that GABA was not enough to address all of her biochemical imbalances. We've done a lot of testing since then. And she uh, is a strong undermethylator, which can be common for some of those uh, extreme behaviors of the attachment disorder. So I do have her on 5-HTP now. She is also on you know, the protocols that I have for being an undermethylator and supporting that system with that of low serotonin and low dopamine at baseline. So that just that, right. will will hold her back with um, doing some of the therapeutic work and the connection work. So supporting, supporting them when they've got these low ser uh, serotonin, the low dopamine, the low GABA for actually helping them get better. Cause otherwise you're fighting their biology right? Yeah. And, and yeah, they may be able to get better, but it's just going to be so much harder on everybody. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because we're talking about, you know, low GABA, low serotonin, and they sound am amazing. And a lot of times after I've done these interviews, people will contact me and say, oh, 
my, my child has this, I want to get them on GABA. And yes, that's great, but you've got to think about everything else as well. Exactly. You know, this little girl that I worked with had to get off, you know, had to change her diet as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got yep. to work on the underlying uh, dietary factors, low blood mm -hmm. sugar. We've got to work on toxins. Are they being exposed yep. to toxins? Have they got infection? So there's everything needs to come into it. But yeah. I like to start with the amino acids because mm -hmm. they give that relief right away. Yep. And now... Yep. We've, we can now work on some of these other factors that are driving exactly. the low GABA and the low yep. serotonin. Yeah. Things just become more manageable when yes. you're, when you've got more serotonin, when you've got more GABA, the, the, the anxiety, the fatigue, the, you know, the chronic symptoms of, of the trauma just are that much more manageable when you've supported the neurotransmitters. And then you can also then work on everything else. But when you, See someone who has, you know, chronic PTSD or even some of these more severe extreme behaviors, you have to understand that it's never just going to be one thing, right, Trudy? Like it to create that extreme of behaviors to block the body in its natural ability to heal itself and to do well, there's a number of factors that come together to create that storm. And so, yeah, you're never going to be able to just throw GABA at it. And we'll be fine, you know, throw some 5-HTP, but it's just this stepping back and, and understanding, hey, there's this big imbalance here. There's this big problem here. Let me take this piece first with the neurotransmitters, support that, because when I do that first, then everything else is, is more manageable to do that, but it's not the only piece. Yes. Really important. Mm -hmm. And the other thing it does is it gives hope, you know, it makes, exactly. it gives the person that you're working with hope because now they're yes. feeling a lot better. If you're working with a child, the mom suddenly has hope. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, they're amazing. They are amazing. Actually it totally transformed my practice when I started using them. So I'm so, yep. it's so wonderful to uh, be talking to, uh, you know, a doctor who's totally on board with all of this as well. It's a real pleasure. <laughs> it 